Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special panel interview. Uh, Isaiah here, joined again by Alejandra and Elliot and Lisa on Team Cheeky. And uh, today we're talking about interviews, challenging interview questions. We have a lot of people who are interviewing for the first time, either for their first or next industry job, and it could be on a phone screen, a video interview, or a site visit as, as more places open. Uh, so we want to talk about the, from each of our perspectives, one of the most difficult interview questions we've been asked or we've seen PhDs being asked right now uh, in our programs and uh, what not to do and, and what to do. And so Alejandro, we'll start with you. I know you have a good question and uh, maybe you can help us understand uh, what we shouldn't do and what we should do instead. Sure, Isaiah, thank you. Well, my question is actually why, like, why did you leave your last position? And this can be also, why do we want to leave academia? And we see sometimes people start to talk about how miserable they are, how they were bullied by their their boss, how they couldn't do their work, um, like their work partners. And this is something you never want to do because think you're interviewing with your future boss and nobody is going to want to hire if they think like, this is what they are going to talk about me when they leave this position. So not even subtle things like we didn't see eye to eye or just make it about you and make it about them. So mm -hmm. you can say it wasn't right for me anymore. It made step. It makes sense as a step to what I wanted professionally, but it was always my main goal, like my final goal to come work with you. And mm -hmm. that way you're not saying anything about your ex employer. You're talking about your path. You're showing that you want to grow and you're also reminding them that you want to work for them, which is in the end what they want to hear. Mm. So Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I always think of, uh, these legal dramas, if you've ever watched them, and like this explosive thing happens in the court, and the you know the other side, the lawyers, even though they're probably freaking out on the inside, they're just like they take their notes yeah. and they act totally calm. So that they're trying to get they're trying to get a rise out of you with these behavioral questions. You basically need to act like you foresaw that the entire time. This was always the plan. Uh, you worked at that last company because you knew it would help you get a job at this company. Uh, Elliot, same question to you. Yeah, basically, like sort of reiterating sort of what Alejandra said, another sort of thing that I keep seeing in companies will ask that people get stuck up on is like, why do you want to work here? Or why do you want this position? Like what, you know, what about this excites you? And you not, you want to make sure that you're going through and acting as if, you know, very assertive. Like this is, you know, I want to work here because this is like my goal. I want to transition into here. You don't want to go through and be like, well, I just need to get out of academia. It's horrible there. Like, again, those sort of things. You always want to go through in the positive aspects of things. You don't want to talk negative about anything like previous job or how you're mistreated in academia, how you're undervalued and you want to go somewhere. You want to bring forth all those like, I have these skills and I want to go through and actually bring these skills to your company because it can excel because it will help me meet my goals and you meet your goals. And like together, this is going to be great. So you want to make sure that when you're coming through, you're saying like, I have these things. I want to add them to your company because it's going to push me forward and it's going to push you forward. Right. Yeah. And I think these rationale questions we're seeing become more and more popular. Uh, people want to know why. You know, it's in it's even in pop culture now. The books start with why. You hear about people talking about why, their purpose, etc. Uh, employers are interested. They want to know what your why is. Why do you want this job, not another job? Why do you want this position, not another position? Why do you want this company, not not another company? Uh, Lisa, how about you? Well, thank you. So Alejandra and Elliot um, both shared really great examples, and I can definitely remember when I was going through my interview process and I answered all of those questions the wrong way. Um, cause I thought my perspective was wrong, um, or I didn't have the right understanding of what companies were looking for. But anyway, in line with that, the question that actually stumped me, um, I think probably it's the most memorable one that stumped me when I was going through my interview process is when I was asked, um, how do you incorporate work-life balance in your day? Like, is mm -hmm. it, you know, if, if we're, if we're a company that in, involves a lot of different tasks, we have a lot of high priority events and we have to do a lot of different things. It's important to make sure that you maintain a balance with uh, what you have, what needs to get done for the company, but it's also, also what you need to do for your own personal life. And that really surprised me because I was used to the academic mindset where 
in my experience, in my experience with what I see with most PhDs is that we just focus on how much can we give? How much can we sacrifice? How much can I give to my, my PI? How much, because they're always looking for more publications, more results, more this, more time in the lab, more, they're always looking for more. Like that's the academic culture, which is very different than industry. Industry is focused on finding people that are like well-rounded people. They're, they are interested in both working really well for the company, getting, helping the company move forward, help the company to succeed in what they want, like what the mission is, which is yeah. why it's so important to make sure that you align your mission, your strategy, your approach, your goals along with um, the company. So when you're answering these questions, you wanna make sure that you are demonstrating that you're a well-rounded person. You're gonna focus on getting the company, helping the company move forward. You're gonna also focus on making sure that you can, are sustainable, like your efforts are sustainable. You mm -hmm. also wanna make sure that um, you demonstrate that you're a fun person to have around on the team, right? Because there's like all these like interactions and engagements and and, so, and that's why we always tell it people, our members to focus on including transferable skills on their resume in your LinkedIn profile, include a hobby, an interest in your LinkedIn profile, because this is all going to show just how much of a, like how great a person, like a whole package person you are to have around both in work and not work. And, and we yeah, well tend said. to not think about that in academia. Yeah, and I think that kind of self-management is, is really what they're looking for, like you said, uh, to, so that your efforts are sustainable. Um, the question that I see have seen come up a lot, and I think that throws a lot of people, and there's a, this, it's really a style of question, is why should we not hire you? Or uh, how would you not be a good fit with this company? And uh, for these questions, you know, there's like the gotcha, it's kind of a gotcha question. They just want to see how you handle the stress of having that uh, kind of almost double negative phrasing. Um, in this particular case, you want to take the high ground, so to speak. Remember why you're applying to that company. You want to be a good fit in that culture. There's something you know about that company's mission, their values. And if they can't live up to their own stated values, their own stated mission, then maybe you're not the best fit for that company. And you don't say it in, a, in an arrogant way or in a, in a high and mighty way. And you focus on the fact that this is what the company wants to achieve. And so you, you might say, you know, well, if you know, your, your, your mission is X, Y, Z, and that's what really attracted me to this company and your values are ABC. And, and that's why I think I'm such a great fit. Um, it, I guess if the company as a whole wasn't able to live up to those values for a, a sustained period of time, then I might not be the best fit. Uh, so hopefully this helps all of you understand how to approach these difficult, challenging questions. Um, there is an answer. It's more about the methodology to the answer. It's more about your approach and uh, staying calm and poised during it. Hopefully this helped you. Thank you to our panel, Alejandra, Elliot, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.